But your book, The Sullied Bride, what is a sullied bride? And that's S-U-L-L-I-E-D. Yes. What sullied. does that mean? Well, sullied means defiled, held in contempt, dis disrespected, disdained, all of these things that women have experienced in their regular life just for being born female. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, a bride is just, you know, the, the wife of the groom, the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And so, the bride has been sullied because, as it teaches that Yeshua, commonly known as Jesus, is returning for a bride. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to be a bride if to be a bride means that you're going to be in a subjection to someone else who is a tyrant? Mm -hmm. And so the bride has been sullied because of this common disrespect and feeling that she is not equal or is not even entitled to feel like she should be respected as an equal sharer. Well, and then when we look at society today, we see that there is a lack of equality between men and women in almost every area that you name, from employment to uh, the wage gap to home ownership, uh, almost in every area there's a huge gap. And today, women only make 70% of a dollar that a man makes. And right. so when you look at that, you see that this scenario has really uh, followed down through the ages where the woman is less than in many, many ways and feeling that, uh, you know, from employment and other ways can certainly uh, have an impact on self-esteem and confidence and uh, a positive attitude just about being a woman. Yes, that is true. <laughs> you also mention stonewalling in your book. And what is the effect of stonewalling on the Adam and Eve story and how you see it today? Right. Stonewalling is the act of ignoring or actively walking away from a conflict in order to exert power in the situation. Because if we are in some type of emotional turmoil or any type of problem, and both of us are required to solve this problem, if I shut down, then that means that in order for, me to, in order for you to get me to help you, you would have to come to me on my terms. And that is the effect of stonewalling where any type of conflict, whether it's financial or emotional, like if the man shuts down, then the only way the woman can appeal to him is to come on his terms. And that's where you get this whole issue of people considering marriage to be a hierarchy where the wife has to come in and respect her husband to a certain degree in order for him to act. Now, obviously, of course, you want to respect your husband, but there's a difference between giving a respect to someone that you find honorable and just respect in a subservient way where she is considered beneath him. Mm -hmm. So in the conflict, the snake was deceiving Eve. Adam was not saying a word. He was literally stonewalling. They were in the middle of a conflict for life and death because literally death did not exist at that point. And he stonewalled at the most crucial time. And then the results was death entered the world and then what was said, that your desire will be after your husband, he will rule over you. So now the tables have turned from God created the woman as an equal, as a counterpart, to contend with the man, because the word that they, can, that they translate typically as helper is actually to contend neged, mm -hmm. and now he's ruling over her. Mm -hmm. So the effect of stonewalling is a way to ignore, shut someone out of a problem, to create the circumstances where they have to come to you on your terms. And could the root of that just be a lack of communication, a lack of being able to, um, you know, to really relate to one another uh, in today's terms when you see stonewalling occurring in a relationship? I mean, that's always a possibility. Um, but in terms of the Adam and Eve story, I try not to let people chalk everything up to a communication difference because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will come up and say, well, is it a communication issue because women communicate differently from men? I don't believe that's true because I've been very straightforward about a lot of stuff when I tell people, like, don't soak the bathroom mat with water when you're in the bathroom. Don't touch my hair. Don't do this. Like, there's no communication disparity with these issues. So you're very upfront and to the point. Right. And so when a woman is upfront, she can be called this, that, and other, mm -hmm. called out of her name. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes people will just do it anyway and then pretend, oh, I didn't know that's what you meant. 
Like, of course you knew that's what I meant. You felt like you had the right to overrule what I said and then pretend it's a communication issue. So, <clears throat> women do give very clear signals, but sometimes men feel that they have the right to overrule that. So, don't eat this fruit. That is a very clear, there's no communication disparity there. And you see her about to eat the fruit, you're watching it, you're witnessing it. If you had said, don't eat it, and she did it anyway, perhaps you could say there's some communication issue or something going on. But he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. You can't have a communication issue if you don't talk. That's true. That mm -hmm. is true.